What's up guys and gals, Mirror Mask here. I know it's been a little while since I put a video out, a little over a month. I'm not sure if you guys follow the news or not, but we had a big ass hurricane come right smack through my area and uh, kind of devastated my town a little bit. Um, one of my scooters is under a tree. The other scooter, I was in the process of getting the fairings painted and I think the guy's shed that the fairings are at is underneath a tree, so I can't ride either one of those. Um, so yeah, anyway, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm not on a scooter today. I'm on a dual sport. I just picked it up yesterday. It's a 2005 Yamaha XT225, also known as a Sorrow. Um, sweet little bike, you know. I mean, this is the first, you guys are coming along on the first ride that I'm actually doing on it. I wasn't able to ride it the day I got it because I got home after dark. Well, I take that back. I rode it um, off the ramp. That's that's as far as I rode it, and I parked it. But, um, yeah, this is the first ride. We're taking it out today. We're going to take it on a little spin around the country. Uh, it's the weekend, so I can't get a tag yet. So that's why we're out in the country cruising around instead of in the town. But, um... Yeah, so far, I mean, you know, there's a little rust on it and everything. It's a 2005, but it handles pretty good, other than some minor rust. I'm digging it, man. It's been a while since I've uh, been on anything that's dirt capable. You know, in my head, you know, I, I know I started off on dirt bikes and everything. I think, like, most riders did when they were kids and stuff. And then you think back, and you're like, man, it's been, like, 20 plus years since I've been on dirt, you know, so I wanted to get a dual sport because, you know, I have plans to move to California and I've been watching a lot of adventure riders, you know, Ever Ride and Each Adventure and a lot of these guys, Joey Mack, 420, all them, Day to Day to Broom Broom, all them out in the California, Utah area where, you know, you've got desert and really cool trails and all this stuff. And I was like, man, you know, I want something I can ride those trails look super fun you know to learn and everything because i i'll be the first to admit like i'm not an adventure rider i've never ridden any kind of trails or anything on any bigger bike or anything like that you know i think 100 cc two stroke or lower is about the biggest i was ever on when i was a kid and back then i mean like a 100 cc two stroke was a big ass bike to me um like a little crf or something but yeah, so I, I didn't want to go too big. I was looking at like a KLR 650. I was looking at, you know, a couple of the, the 400 CCs, 350 CCs, the DRs Zs and stuff and all that. But um, I, I decided, you know, I wanted something in the 200 to 250 range. I was looking at the TW 200. I was looking at the, um, well, I wasn't looking at, I was looking at the WR 250R, but I saw the price tag and I was like, holy crap, like hell no. I'm not, you know, I don't want to pay five grand for a bike. I'm just going to dump over and over and over while I'm learning. So, the entire month and a half or whenever it's been since, you know, the storm, um, I've just kind of been browsing Craigslist and watching videos and reading reviews and all this and trying to figure out, you know, what a good deal was. And Because one thing I noticed, like, this, does, it doesn't happen with sport bikes. It doesn't happen with cruisers. Dual sports hold their value. Oh my God, the used market is almost as expensive as the new market. So that was like the first hurdle I, I came into is like, man, I don't even know if I could afford a dual sport right now. So anyway, I'm gonna park up here and, and park it and let you guys check it out. I'll do like a little walk around of it. I guess I, does it, okay, yeah. I didn't know if I had a switch or something. Um, exhaust, I guess you guys couldn't hear it. I was trying to, let me get where you can hear it. Exhaust sounds really good. I don't know if they did some kind of after, not aftermarket, but remove the baffles or something. I, I'm not sure, but I doubt it because this doesn't look like it's been opened. But um, yeah, I mean, it's in pretty decent shape. It's got, you know 3,526 miles 
he put brand new tires on it about 200 miles ago these are i don't know these look like about maybe 30 70 maybe 30 off-road 70 but it came with the original set of tires that have about 3,000 miles on them or 3,200 miles on them and um they still got some you know about a half an inch of knob lift on them that's the knobby set this is the more street oriented i guess enduro set he put on it um i was surprised that this little toolbox was still on there still got the manual and tools and everything in it you know it's a little scuffed up but it was a dual sport man it's meant to be dropped but um i don't know what do you guys think i got it for 1500 bucks i talked them down from 1600 1500 man for a 2005 not bad with only you know 3500 miles on it like i said i mean no tag to hide i don't have it on there yet but um one thing i did because i plan on painting all this stuff white I, I went ahead and just power washed the yamaha logo off of it i'm about to figure out how to get the stickers off i want to put an aftermarket tank that's like a 2.1 gallon tank i want to put a 4.1 on it and then get some racks for it um so i can put some roto packs on it but yeah, I mean, it's, I'm digging it. I mean, it's super clean. The engine looks really clean. Yeah, you can see it's been brushed up against some stuff here and there. It doesn't look like it's been dropped. It just looks like maybe it's been ran up against a tree or something. Suspension's pretty good on it. It's not adjustable. If you guys know anything about a XT225, I can't adjust a preload or anything. Actually, what the hell? That does look like I can adjust a preload. Maybe I can on the front forks, but I can on the rear. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, I mean, this that's it, man. I'm digging it. Tension on the chain's pretty good. I didn't really have to adjust anything. Let's get back to riding. Shut my face visor. Yeah, first gear is like a damn tractor, man. I was climbing shit on my property earlier um it's good for maybe seven to eight miles an hour first gear is and then you got you got to come out like it it's 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 yeah it, that's a tractor gear it's a six speed so you know first gear is not gonna be as wide as a five speed i wish um i wish it had a little bit wider pegs on it they're they're kind of I don't know if you guys can see them. They're kind of narrow. They don't give you much of a platform to stand on. But I might have to get the weld on type because I couldn't, you know, leave in the comments. If you guys know where I can get some foot pegs that fit this bike, you know, please let me know because the only ones I could find are some weld on ones. Everything else looks like it doesn't fit it. So that, that could be a little bit of a problem, you know if I buy the wrong ones and try to make them work, you know, that shit could be unsafe. So I might end up having to get the weld on ones. But yeah, like I was saying about the storm, yeah, it, it smashed one of my scooters, which I was trying to sell. I currently had it listed and everything. I had to take the ad off Craigslist. I mean, it's under a tree right now. <clears throat> Hopefully insurance will cover it because I had it over at my dad's property and um i didn't have insurance on it because i took it off i was selling it so i was like well you know it'll go and he swore up and down you know it'll go under my homeowner's insurance i was like are you sure and he's like yeah pretty sure i was like all right <coughs> so long story short yeah his insurance co uh, it didn't cover it so um i think i'm either gonna have to try to part it out or just scrap it I don't know because it ain't doing me any good anyway that was part of my California money I was gonna use that to buy a dual sport but you know things worked out for the best I don't owe anything on this bike it's all paid off man I just happen to have you know about a grand saved up and um, I asked him I said you know I know you want 16 for it but you know is there anything lower that you'll take that we can make this deal happen and he said 15 i was like all right cool well I, you know I, I know where i can get 500 real quick so 
I borrowed 500 from my dad, you know, because he kind of felt bad that my scooter got squished and nothing got covered. So he, he, you know, gave me the 500 and I went and bought it that day um, that I made the deal on. I, I'd been looking at it. He had it listed for about two weeks. <coughs> I guess he didn't get any bites or something at, at 1600 but that's the weird thing about this area. See, you don't have a lot of dual sports that are listed. Oh, uh, let's do handlebar test. Yeah, okay, they're stable. Um, you don't have a lot of dual sports. They're up in North Georgia, around the Atlanta area, north of Atlanta. You have them down around the Jacksonville area. You have them up around Birmingham. You know, where, where there's mountainous areas and kind of beach areas is where you'll find the dual sports. You don't really find them in the deep, deep south. You find a bunch of cruisers and sport bikes. So that was my first issue was, oh man, I'm, I don't have anything within a 250 mile radius of me that's, you know, not $5,000 or more. And I came across this one, the guy just listed it, and I messaged him the first day he listed it, and it was like asking him a bunch of questions and stuff about it. And I mean, he was real cool um, at answering everything and all that. I was a little iffy at first because he was like, no, I don't have the title in hand. The DMV has the title. It's an electronic title. And I was like, uh, yeah, I don't know. If you don't have the title in your hand, I don't know, man. I don't want to ride up to your house with cash in my pocket and you don't have a paper title ready. But he was able to go up there and pay and get it printed out and all this stuff so he'd have a paper version for me. <clears throat> and, um... <coughs> Sorry, man. My throat's a little dry today. Anyway, we made it happen. Made the deal happen. I went down there and picked it up. Um, I'm going to try Monday to go in there and get my plate for it. I got to pay the tax on it. hope it's not a tremendous amount. Because that's, that's how Georgia joins it. Georgia has something called a TAV tax. Where when you buy a vehicle, you don't pay tax on it when you buy it. You pay tax on it when you register and put a tag on it. And you don't pay tax on the amount that you paid. You pay tax on the actual value of the bike. If you guys remember on my scooter, my Vespa, I told you the story of how I got that. And I got it for $1,500, but then I had to pay the tax on like $3,200 because that's what the value of it was. So that was like the first time I found out about this new tax we have. So anyway... That kind of threw me for a loop. So I'm prepared for it this time. You know, I know the value of the bike is about about what I paid for it. Maybe a little less. Um, it's around the $1,500 mark. So that's, that's pretty sweet. So I only got to pay taxes on what I actually paid, basically. Instead of like some surprise thing. Nope, it's worth five grand. You got to pay 6% or 7% on five grand. Screw that. I'm gonna cut through this dirt road right here because this this takes me back to my road. I have not actually taken this thing on dirt yet. I'm a little kind of like iffy about it to be honest. I think I'm gonna just keep my ass in third and I'm gonna stand up. Yeah, this sucks, man. I wish I had some bigger pegs. Standing up on this kind of is iffy. I don't want to go too fast because I know it just rained and I'm not fluent in standing up and riding. You know, I mean, I've done it some on cruisers and I've done it some on standard bikes and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I've never done it on dirt roads. But I know that I, I need to be getting used to standing up. That's what everyone says. Like, if you're gonna get into adventure riding, you need to get used to standing up and riding. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I got my weight over my gas tank. That's not too bad. Of course, it's not bad. It's not rough either, like the terrain. But yeah, dude, I can definitely tell. I need some handlebars. I need some handlebar risers. I wanna get some bark busters because I know I'm gonna bust my ass on this shit. Might bust my ass today. I don't know, but I don't really.
really know of any trails around here. I, I, I used to know a bunch of them back when we had a, kind of a group of people we all went to school with and they all had like four wheelers and everything. And you know, we used to have all these trails around here. Of course, I don't even know if this, oh, well there's power lines, shit. I don't even know if, um, god damn, there's power lines all over this road. I didn't even see them. Good thing I didn't ride over them, man. That could have tangled up and I'd have high sided right over the front of this motherfucker. I just be laying in the dirt. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm gonna sit back down because I'm right up here at the road. Engine brake. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get used to using engine brake a whole lot more on this bike. I already use it on manual stuff anyway, but. This has got a drum brake in the back and I don't know, I'm not too keen on drum brakes. See, that was it for first gear. Went ahead and just skipped fifth and went to sixth. Oh, this dog fucking chases me every damn time, man. I gotta get me some room. Whoop, later. Oh, he didn't, he didn't chase me that time. I think he got used to it. Or maybe this bike's just a lot louder than the scooter, so maybe he was like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah, it rides nice. I mean, I think I, I can get it up to about, I don't know, we'll see, let's top this hill. I mean, it's only a 225. I mean, you're not gonna get 80 miles an hour out of it. <coughs> yeah, I'm up a little past 60. I still got some throttle to go. I don't like to ring it out though, but um, we'll do a speed run test. I mean, it's, it's broken in, it's at 3,500 miles. Yeah, look, we're up at 65, we're past 65. We're getting up around 70. Damn, this bike riding out. Yeah, we're at about maybe 68. I'm gonna ease it on back though. This shit is rough. The wind, I mean. Like, there is like no wind guard at all. But you guys know what this means. I gotta get new gear. And that shit's expensive. Anytime you gotta get new gear. Because I mean, you know, street helmet's great, but I don't have a peak on this helmet. And, you know, I would like to have a peak because, you know, it does more than just shade from the sun. I mean, you know, peaks, you can dip your head down and move branches out of the way and keep them from hitting you in the face or the goggles or the shield. You know, if you get a full face, I mean, a, a, yeah, a full face with a shield on it and still has, you know, a peak. You can use the peak to dip down and move shit out of the way. You know, it's good at blocking the sun, which is important because when you're on the street, you know, you know, contrast doesn't matter as much as it does when you're on the dirt. And what do I mean by, you know, things affecting contrast? Well, look at it this way. When you're riding on the street and the sun's out, and the sun hits you, you know, coming in from the top of your helmet, it can take away your ability to judge contrast. You know, minor contrast, which is a huge deal. Um... It's not such a huge deal on the street, but it is a big deal on the dirt. You need that contrast, because that contrast is what helps you figure out... Oh, fuck it, I'm on a dual sport. What am I doing? That contrast... See, like, if I was riding this and I couldn't see contrast, I wouldn't be able to see potholes or dips or ruts or whoops or anything like that. You know, it'd be hard to judge them. So... That's why a peak's important. That's why, you know, if you're riding an adventure bike or a dual sport, you want to get a helmet with a peak on it to block that sun so you can see full contrast so you don't fuck up. On the street, you don't really need it because everything's mainly flat. So yeah, that's why I need a helmet with a peak now. Um, riding gear, I want body armor. I want full body armor. Um, you know, knee guards, the whole chest protector and everything like that. Um, I gotta get some riding boots. 
I mean, I have, you know, good boots, but <coughs> these are street boots. You don't want to wear this shit on the dirt. They don't have the proper, you know, they don't have ankle support, crush protection. They don't have, you know, a lip around the top to keep dirt and crap dust from getting in there. They don't have shin guards on them. You know, they're not, they're not built for trail and off-road stuff. So I want to get a set of that. Um, I think for full on like a riding gear, you know, like a set, a jacket and pants, I don't think I'm getting that just yet. I think I'll be fine with the body armor because I don't do a whole lot of trail riding, but I want to get into it. But seeing as how I'm new to trail riding and everything, you know, I don't want to go overboard with the gear <coughs> when I'm not quite sure what I need. You see what I'm saying? So I just want to get you know, a basic full set of gear. I want to get the full, you know, the, the mesh, you know, the body armor shirt. I, I can't think of what they're called. I just call it full body armor shirt. Um, and then, you know, wear a jersey or a jacket or something over that. But that, you know, that gives you armor all the way down your arm and everything. And it comes with a set of uh, shorts with hip protectors and tailbone protectors and all that stuff. And it comes with knee guards, you know, like knee protectors. And I'm gonna get a set of boots because boots are probably, boots and helmet and gloves to me are probably some of the most necessary gear that you could possibly get. Like you, you, you have to have that shit. Standing up again. I'm gonna ride out. Look at some of this damage that happened here. This is my driveway. This thing had like three trees down in it, right up there at the front. And we kind of got them pushed out to the side and cut up a little bit. But some of this stuff, you need some big ass equipment to get. Um, let's see, is, who's here? Oh, dad's truck's there. Okay, dad's here. I thought it was it. He must be here from church. I don't know. But they've brought a pod over here. Some horses. I'm on a steel horse I ride. What's up, horses? Yeah, like a lot of these trees back here got knocked down. So their property, this is my dad's property. But, um,. Yeah, it's kind of jacked up. Dude, that's weird, man. I just naturally threw my leg out. Like I, like muscle memory from when I was little, I shifted my weight, my ass, and I threw my leg out. See, I remember in a little bit. We used to have, over here on this property right here, we used to have some trails that we did for our four wheelers when we were little. And um, I'm sure they're still there, but uh, there's probably a bunch of rattlesnakes. Well, I don't know about this time of year, but there might be. But they were like peanut hole um, jumps, essentially. They weren't, I wouldn't call them whoops. Like this shit right here is like whoops. <laughs> the suspension on this isn't bad. But I'll tell you what, you can definitely tell it's not like a high grade suspension. And it, I wish I could adjust the preload a little bit, but it is what it is. Yeah, see, I can't stand all the way up. I gotta bend my knees just a lot more than I'd like to, simply because my handlebars are so low. I need to put some risers on them. But I wanna put maybe some pro tapers or something with a little bit better bend on them and then maybe stick some risers on it or something I don't know yeah I have to keep reminding myself this is not a dirt bike like I I keep wanting to go up jumps and shit like I wanted to haul ass over that ditch in my driveway but I, man I'd bottom out I'd bust my ass But yeah, man, this thing actually, it's surprising how well it lugs in first gear. Like I, 
I wasn't expecting it. You know, in videos and stuff, people are like, man, this thing's like a mountain goat, man. This thing will go. Don't you chase me. Um, and it's the truth, man. It'll go. It'll just chug along in first gear. I mean, it, you know, I thought it would stall and all this stuff. Let's see. Let's get it down into first. No. Yeah, it's just chugging along. That's at idle. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. Man, I'm like the king at like jumping gears, dude. I don't, <coughs> I usually don't hit third and I don't hit fifth. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. I just, I just double shift. I just get my RPMs up high enough and I just double shift. That dog's actually chilled out today, man. I'm gonna ride down there. I know whose property that is. turn around up here and we'll ride down there actually I know uh, excuse me while I turn around yeah I'm gonna go back on that property there I know the guy who owns it so it should be cool any cars nope i'm just a little worried that the the tires i have aren't going to be grippy enough if it's if they run into mud i really hope i don't run into mud to be honest but i could oh dude i gotta remember i don't have a tag I can't, <laughs> i'm getting too comfortable on the road here It's a cotton field. You guys ever wonder where your t-shirts come from? There you go. Oh man, I thought I felt I, I think I felt my suspension bottom out. Dude, those little whoops are fun as shit. <laughs> that was like way steeper on the backside than I thought it was when I was approaching it. Oh shit, what the hell did I, I hit a stick or something? Damn, grab my ankle. I thought it was I thought it was a snake. I'm not gonna lie. My damn visor's all fogged up. I can't see shit. What hit? Oh, is that stick right there? Okay. Yeah, I definitely need bigger pegs, man. I can feel this shit. Yeah, not too bad i could definitely tell i would bottom this motherfucker out though if i hit a big jump if i got you know anything over a foot of air i would be bottomed out when i hit the ground i can tell it already that's all right though i mean you know it, it ain't that ain't what it's meant for it can jump if you have to but it's not exactly designed to jump so Oh man, I need some damn goggles, dude. My, it's getting cooler. The weather's getting a little cooler. Every time I exhale, my visor goes shoop, and just fogs up. That's another uh, reason to get, you know, a dual sport or off-road or adventure helmet, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, a regular street helmet is not designed to take goggles like the face shield or not face shield, the the i guess the eye opening the face opening part or whatever you want to call it is not big enough to receive goggles 
and goggles are important and you may say well if it has a face shield on it why do you need goggles well you know that's a valid question and here's a good answer because when you're off-road you're not going most of the time faster or as fast as you would on the street so you don't have that ventilation to pull you know the the um, humidity and stuff out of your helmet fast enough and you get condensation on your visor also known as you exhale and fog up your visor you know um and you know if you're on rough terrain you need to be able to see everything when you need to see it you know what i'm saying you don't need to like stop and flip your visor up and all this dumb crap that could get you killed you right off the side of a fucking mountain man um there's my scooter under there there's the tires i'm gonna show you guys the tires that that came with it um damn that was a fun ride this little bike kicks ass but um let me open this oh what the heck my visor's all jacked up right now super foggy um but yeah i mean you need goggles that can you know fit in the front of your helmet so that way you get just your eyes protected but you still have airflow and your mouth and nose are not connected to the same area vicinity area i guess i don't know what the technical term is the same compartment as your eyes so when you exhale you exhale into the helmet and it doesn't affect your vision so that's why you want that kind of helmet that was a super long technical term too it doesn't fog up when you exhale but see like it's not bad you know there's still a little bit of tread left on these front tire more so than the rear tire um the rear tire has some grip but you know looking at this that'd be great in the turns but on a straightaway these will actually give you more grip just because they've got more grip but um yeah that's it guys hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure to like comment to subscribe um if you have any tips or anything for me about this particular bike the XT225 Yamaha 2005 um, let me know you know where's a good place to get some good racks um, what's the best type of rack to get for this bike you know what kind of brush guards or bark busters um, do y'all like to use what what's the best handlebars to get for it you know what's what's a good comfortable bend on the bar you know things like that you guys let me know but um that was it make sure to like comment subscribe leave any questions below and um i'll, I'll see you guys in the next video man y'all have a good one mirror mask out peace